In the previous lecture, we discussed a concept known as ray diagrams. So we said that we can use ray diagrams to essentially help us determine the location and position of our image relative to our object for concave and convex spherical mirrors. Now, using ray diagrams to determine the location and position of our image can be very tedious, difficult, and even inaccurate. Instead of using ray diagrams, we can use an equation known as the mirror equation to help us determine the position and location of our image relative to our object. So we can derive the mirror equation that will relate the image distance, the object distance, as well as the focal length. And these quantities will help us determine the position and location of our image, as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin by making the following assumption. So we're making the assumption that the size of our concave mirror is small relative to the radius of curvature. So let's look at the following diagram. So we essentially want to use light rays to essentially derive the mirror equation as well as something known as magnification. So let's begin by supposing we have the following concave mirror. So we have our axis uh, as shown by the following line. So we essentially begin with two light rays. So this is light ray number one and light ray number two. So light ray number one essentially reflects off of our object which is shown by the following purple arrow. So it reflects off of our object travels to the center of our concave mirror and reflect as shown by the following arrow. Now arrow number two or, or light ray number two reflects off of the same point on our image but it travels through the focus given by the following F. So it travels through the focus, eventually reflecting off of our concave mirror, and the reflected ray essentially travels parallel with respect to our axis. And at the point where our two light rays intersect at point I, that's the location of our image. So our image will begin on the axis at point Z and will end and at our point I at the point where our two rays of light intersect the point is known as the image point so let's begin by labeling all the important points that we're going to need to use in the following derivation so point O is essentially the point where our two uh, rays of light bounce off of our object. So that is point O. So point X is essentially the center of our concave mirror. The focal point is given by point F. Now point W is shown in the following diagram and the distance from W to O is the height of our object given by H with the O symbol. Now point C is simply our uh, radius of curvature so the distance from C to X is our radius of curvature. Now point Z is as follows and the distance from point Z to point I is the height of of our image given by HI. Now point Y is shown in the following diagram and it will become important in just a moment. So the distance from X to Y is a line that cuts the axis perpendicularly. So if we draw the following line, this will be perpendicular with respect to our axis. So let's begin by defining these five terms. So HO is the height of our object as shown 
F is the focal length, so this is F. HI is the height of the image as shown. DO is the perpendicular distance from the mirror to the object. So DO is shown, it's this distance from W to X. And DI is the perpendicular distance from the mirror to the image. So if we begin at point X and we go to point Z, this is our DI. It's the perpendicular distance from the mirror to the image. So let's begin our derivation. So we essentially want to derive the mirror equation and then we want to find the magnification equation. So let's begin by applying the law of reflection. So let's begin with ray number one. So ray number one bounces off from point zero or point O on our object. It goes to the center of our concave mirror and bounces off. So notice that this is our normal line. And so by the law of reflection, this angle is equal to this angle. So that basically means angle OXF angle O X F is equal to angle F X I angle F X I so these two angles are equal and because these two angles are equal this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle that means we have two right triangles that are similar so triangles O X W and I Z X are similar triangles. So OXW is OXW, so this is one right triangle, and IZX is as follows. We have IZX. So this triangle is similar to this triangle because they have 90 degree measures, these angles are the same, and so these angles are also the same. So that means if we take the length of one side of this triangle and divided by the length of any other side, that proportion is equal to the length of that same side divided by the other side of the second triangle. So that basically means the following. HO divided by DO, the ratio of the height to the base of the first triangle is equal to the ratio of the height to the base of the second triangle. Now if we rearrange this equation, we get the following equation. Let's call this equation 1. This will become important in just a moment. So now let's move on to the second part. So because the mirror, because we're making the assumption that the mirror is small compared to the radius of curvature, that basically means the distance xy is equal to the height zi or the height of our image. So zi is equal to xy, which is equal to the height of our image. So then that basically implies that triangles O, F, W and and FXY are similar triangles. So once again, OFW is, we have O. FW, so this smaller right triangle is similar to the following right triangle, so FXY. So FXY is similar to OWF because these two angles are exactly the same. These are 90 degree angles and the other angle is also the same. So if we finish off the height of our second right triangle will have the second right triangle and the first right triangle. So that basically implies that HO divided by line segment WF, so HO divided by WF is equal to X, uh, XY, so XY the height, divided by FX, where FX is this base, is the base of our second triangle. So what exactly XY? Well, from this assumption, XY is equal to HI. So XY can be replaced with HI. So that basically implies that if we take this and rearrange it, we get the following result. So HO divided by HI is equal to the line segment WF divided by the line segment FX. Now from equation 1, HO divided by HI 
is equal to DO divided by DI. So that means this is also equal to DO divided by DI. Now, what exactly is the line segment WF and what is the line segment FX? Well, the line segment FX is simply the focal length. So that means FX is equal to the focal length. And what exactly is the line segment WF? Well, WF can be obtained by taking DO and subtracting F. That will give us this distance, which is equal to F or, or WF. So WF is equal to DO minus F. So that means HO divided by HI is equal to DO minus F divided by F. And this ratio is equal to DO divided by DI by equation 1. So if we divide both sides by DO and we rearrange, we get the following result. So 1 divided by DI is equal to 1 divided by F minus 1 divided by DO. We take this and we bring it to the left side and we get the following equation. 1 divided by the focal length is equal to 1 divided by the distance from the center of our concave mirror to the image plus 1 divided by DO, the distance from the center of our mirror to our object. So this equation is commonly known as the mirror equation. Now, this equation, which essentially is obtained from this equation, is known as our magnification. So the lateral magnification simply means by how much larger is the image size from our object size. So the magnification or the lateral magnification given by lowercase m is equal to hi, the height of the image, divided by h uh, o, uh, the height of the actual object, and this is equal to negative di divided by do from this equation. Now, what exactly is the meaning of the negative? So let's look at the following two important notes. So the negative simply signifies whether or not our image is inverted or right side up. So in this case, for example, the image points in the opposite direction of our direction of the object. And so that means HI will be negative. So HI is negative if the image is in inverted, if the image is right side up, if it points in the same direction as the object, that means HI will be positive. Now, DI is assumed to be negative if the image is located behind our mirror. So in this case, the image is located on the same side as the object, and that basically means DI will be positive. But if DI was on this side, if the object was on this side, that means our DI would be negative because our object will be located on the other side of our mirror, on the other side of our object.